Hey, what is up guys? Yoni Monster here with another replay. This replay was sent in by Team Exodia, so thank you guys for sending this replay in and letting me cast it. So yeah, let's get into the draft. Uh, looks like it's for the Styler Radiant. We're gonna have... I mean, this is just my guess, but probably Safe Lane. Safe Lane PA, Mid, Invoker. Offlane Dawn or 5 Dawn? Or 3 Pudge? I'm not really sure. This Dawnbreaker does have a Quelling Blade, so... But she is heading over to the bottom lane, so it could be a five down breaker with just you know the casual, very casual, um, Quellen blade. But I think it is going to be the the three punch here, and it might be the four winter wyvern. But we'll just have to see. Let's have a look for this side of Exodia. Uh, Monkey King safe, Oracle five. This storm spirit in the mid, off lane night stalker, and then the four vengeful spirit. All right, pretty cool stuff. Pretty similar drafts uh, all throughout from these uh, from these games that have been sent. I think the only th thing that's kind of unusual, or like you know, out of the ordinary, is the Storm Spirit. I haven't seen a lot of Storm Spirit from Gravity this um, you know these past few replays, but it's cool to see it again. And uh, looking forward to what he's gonna be able to make out with it. We do have a pause. Well, it looks like it's just gonna get ignored. <laughs> and. As per usual, Xodia GG is taken to the side of the triangle. Oh, Dawnbreaker has a point in the passive into Luminosity. Wants to steal the way the Ruin Fortune sends turning her up. Then the Vortex pulling her back. A few more right clicks should be able to do it. Uh, not quite able to secure the kill. Xodia doesn't really want to chase any further. And it looks like they're just going to give up the chase. Uh, Dawnbreaker did a tango, but she does have a salve if she does need that. So she should be A-OK. -okay. She might just be going back to the base just to region and then just TP back to the lane. But yeah, it looks like it is going to be a 5 dawn. Let's see, Invoker going for the point into the Exord. <clears throat> we'll see if he gets uh, points into the Quas or uh, or the Wax, but probably will be the Quas, you know, once we get that cold snap up and going. That Fortune Sand, I think, uh, was onto the Monkey King to try to purge it off. But perhaps thought oh, a little bit of missed it. I said, uh, but perhaps thought that uh, Winter Wyvern was gonna stick around, so the Fortune Sand would have hit on her too as well. <clears throat> See, <laughs> you gotta love it when your support starts taking less hits as well. So look, this top wave is pushing a decent amount. We'll see if the Oracle does does actually eventually pull that. So far, pretty chilling in the mid lane. Pretty even. I mean, five to three to the eight to eight to two. I mean, you, I don't know. I do expect the the Storm Spirit to be able to clear waves a little bit faster than Invoker. Oh, Celestial Hammer going on forward onto this Night Stalker, but. A little bit too close to his tower, so won't be able to chase any further. Thanks. Gets helped up by his boy, so it should be A-OK, -okay, backed up to full HP. Oh, attempting to pull. Gotta love it when, uh, you know, you're the safe laner and you have to do your own pulls, because, you know, your support's just doing whatever they're doing. <laughs> Already with the bottle here on gravity, that's gonna be quite nice. You know, being able to fill out those bottles and keep spamming out those waves, shoving in those lanes to Invoker. Invoker doesn't really like um, having the lane shoved into him. Oh, <laughs> nice attempt at the deny there. It works better on range creeps than it does like normal creeps, but the, the attempt was there. Let's see. How long do we have for night time? Another two minutes. So let's see. So this is a monkey king have coming. Oh, over corrosion already. That's kind of nice. Gonna be able to apply some pressure if he wants into the lane. Oh, wow, really using that um, fortune sand very prematurely. Oh, Pudge. Getting the Jingu stacks going. One more right click should be able to do it. And the salve. They try to get it, but the Purifying Flames and the right click from the Monkey King, it's gonna be enough to get the kill there. Nicely done. Okay, and the Monkey King gets first blood. Nice bit of gold going his way.
already with the glove of haste gonna be going for that midas so this is gonna be like a full-on exhort invoker nice bandless strike there securing the range creep dive down here on the bot but with this night stalker being so close to his tower it's kind of hard for you know this pa or this uh Dawnbreaker to try to make a go onto these guys. It's a little bit unfortunate this is Dawnbreaker is like not pulling the lane, kinda just like playing the lane, but like she's you know, PA, uh Dawnbreaker, not really heroes that can really go on to kills for these heroes, but as just as I say that Velocity well, Hammer start going onto this this Night Stalker, but oh Sunstrike. Does hit onto the Night Stalker, so they do claim up the kill there. Nicely done there, good Sunstrike from the Invoker. And now they wanna dive onto this Vengeful Spirit, but start backing away. But hey, they get the kill onto the Night Stalker, which is pretty nice. A nice little return say, a nice little return kill going their way. Invoker luckily was able to clean that up. Nice gravity clearing here. The enemy small stack, the most small camp. Oh no way! The dagger and the sun strike enough to get the kill into the eventual spirit there. Don't think she was expecting the the dagger into sun strike. Neither was I. But pretty nice kills there. I was about to say I'm really curious on what this build, this pay is gonna go, but you know, Simi Ring of Health and pretty much the Battle Fury queued up, so gonna be a PA Battle Fury. Hopefully like uh you know, when it works, PA Battlefield can be really good. You know, you can get a lot of farm going and you can really be this late game threat even when people get the MKB. It's just like, if your team gets ran over and like, you're not able to get your timings, your, your items in a decent timing, it's uh, it's a little bit hard <clears throat> letting your team just fight on 4 on 5. Nice little hook there, securing the, the Siege turret there. Let's see, Runes will be spawning another three seconds so oh and that's a region gravity would love to get his hands on that will he check the right way yes he will he has vision of the top so he's gonna go down to bottom and claim a nice little region for himself probably one of the better runes to get overall no i might have gone a little bit too far back but oh boundless strike hits Oh, I mean, Jingle Mastery, and then the Boundless Strike sure to come after. There it is. Nicely done, just able to chase down this Pudge, you know. Um, Winter Warrior wasn't quite in the lane, so Monkey King was able to chase him down, get the Jingle stacks up, and then... Easy kill. Nicely done. Storm Spirit been able to last it pretty well, but then again, you also have to take into account those last hits. Uh, might be a little bit inflated from uh, the small camps that he's been uh, also killing up, so... Oh no, I think his clarity got immediately cancelled there from the Wave of Terror, so nicely done by Pex there, denying away the clarity from this Dawnbreaker. Trying to deny this Siege Turret, nice. Oh, actually it wasn't a deny, it was uh, the enemies able to get that. Leaping into the trees, perhaps wanting to find a kill onto either one of these heroes. Pudge a little bit harder than the Winter Wyvern, but Winter Wyvern doesn't have a point into the Cold Embrace, but they don't know that. But there we go, Final Spring, Fortune's End. But looks like Intranaut doesn't want to chase any further. Ooh, hook. A little bit too short on the hook there, a little bit unfortunate. Wasn't quite able to catch onto the Oracle. Storm Spirit farming out the jungle. Let's see. Making good progress into this Orchid. Looks like he's gonna be rushing that. Void with the Wave of Terror. Now that it's nighttime, this Night Stalker can play a little bit more ballsy than he did before. Now that he has these those three points into the Hunter of the Night and the Void. Clicking away. Not taking Tyro Aggro. Another Magic Missile with the Wave of Terror. Now it might be the dive that we're looking for. Phantom Strike onto the. Dawnbreaker try to get a little bit more distance void. Oh no, this nice talker is gonna stay right on top of this PA and PA is gonna end up going down. Not much the Dawnbreaker can really do for his safe laner. Pudge gonna TP on in. Gonna get the hook onto the Vengeful Spirit. They get the rod, so it's getting the slowdown, but this Night Stalker providing the backup and they're just gonna get a double kill. Uh, 
I don't know, maybe Pudge thinking that he had the backup of the Dawnbreaker, but this Dawnbreaker is like, I'm out of here, bro. I gotta get some mana, man. Going back to base, and Pudge just end up feeding uh, a double kill for this this offlane here for Excite of Exodia. A little unfortunate, for sure. You definitely want to be having a good start if you're going to be going for a Battle Fury PA. I'm actually going to switch over to net worth because I'm actually really curious on what the net worth is. A lot of people are already starting to have a lot of last hits now. Oh, I'm really surprised at this invoker. I mean, he's already... I'm not sure how long he's had his Midas for. Uh, I haven't quite been able to catch it, but, you know, pretty good timing on it, that's for sure. Oh, meat Meatball with the cold snap, doing a good bit of damage onto the Storm Spirit. He's able to sip away, so it should be A-OK. -okay. But once the Storm Spirit does have his um, Orchid... This invoker will need to be a little bit careful. He says he's gonna be going for the BOT, so no defensive item as of yet. Hmm. Quick, going for the classic, you know, Echo Saver. Pretty much what you see every Night Stalker do, and Gravity. Making a rotation down here at the bottom. I really like these rotations. Hinder this PA's game even that much further. You don't really have a great answer for the PA until an uh, Echo Saber. Not Echo Saber. Silver Edge comes out. Sip forward with the Vortex. We're going to get the kill until the Dawnbreaker. Dark Ascension. Also getting pop. Invoker TPing on in. And it looks like both sides are just going to retreat. Storm Spirit doesn't really have a lot of mana, so. Doesn't quite want to go in. Also, Night Stalker doesn't have the greatest of mana pools right now, so. They're just going to back away. They get the kill until the Dawnbreaker, but I think the you know the big saving grace, even the punch teeping in, I think the big saving grace for this Radiant team is that, you know, PA is not really dying. Maybe her farm is getting hindered a little bit, but at least she didn't die, so. At least you got that going for you if you're the side of the Radiant. But is PA really falling behind here in this last in this uh in this farm department? This monkey king is just zooming ahead. Yeah, once this Monkey King, you know, he gets Echo Saver, then I'm not sure if he's gonna go for the um, good old, good old Desolator, or if he's just gonna go for the straight into the um, Soul Bridge to break away that uh, that blur. But we'll see. Celestial Hammer, change target, Star Hammer, hitting onto the Night Stalker with the dismember, but the swap, saving away. Oh, and the hook off the mark. So really nicely done there by Pex. If Pex actually gets away, God play. Oh. Krui going right back in, the Pulse Promise does come in the nick of time and they get the kill onto the Pudge, nicely done there, Starbreaker, this is on the third hit, Celestial Hammer being thrown out, but not gonna quite land onto anything, so wow, Sorry GG, really baiting here, you know, you know, you take aggro on one hero and then the other hero uses his abilities, comes in, that, that hero takes aggro, then another hero comes in, uses their abilities, that was just beautiful man, beautiful baiting going on. I'm actually surprised that <laughs> this Vengeful Spirit did not die, nor did the, the bat there. They're really, you know, playing it there on the edge, and, you know, Bravio's there with the TP. Just in the nick of time, being able to provide that False Promise safe forward with the Vortex onto the Invoker. Invoker, pretty low in HP. Uh, does have the Ghost Walk, but there's no detection outside of this sentry. So now the Dismember onto the Storm Spirit, the turnaround, the Meatball, no mana. Ooh, actually gets... <laughs> actually gets the kill onto the invoker just turns around and starts right clicking them right clicking him really nicely done there by gravity uh honestly I, I think that's honestly the fact that you got the kill onto the invoker that's actually not that bad if you're the storm spirit i mean the pudge is definitely gonna be very happy about that but uh if you're the storm spirit you're definitely pretty happy about that you know you end up getting the kill onto the invoker and uh invoker doesn't get any, any exp so pretty good pretty good See, Monkey King. Oh, looks like he wants to go straight into the MKB. Now messing about. Doesn't want to get that Silver Edge. Just wants to constantly have that true, true, uh, true strike so he can deal with the PA. All right. Why not? And then going for the BKB. I mean, I guess an Invoker. You definitely need some type of BKB. Oh, Invoker with the TP rotation down the bottom. Cold Snap onto the Night Stalker. Celestial Hammer being thrown forward. A few more right clicks, and they should be able to get the kill, and they will. At the same time, Gravity making the rotation up top. Primal Spring trying to go into this PA. No boundless strike, but not even needed. Now down at bottom, Night Stalker did end up going down to the Invoker. So simultaneous plays here by both sides. 
But I think overall the big the big kill was the big kill, the kill onto the PA over here at the top. You know, this Monkey King able to get involved into some kills. Nice rotation by Gravity. They get the kill onto this um, Winter Wyvern and then all of a sudden they get the kill onto the PA. Yeah, sure, you lose your Vengeful Spirit and your Night Stalker down at bottom, but they're doing their job. You know, they're drawing the tension away from your Monkey King so he's able to farm nicely. And, you know, this Monkey King is also able to clean up a nice little kill onto the safe laner. I think it was the Monkey King that cleaned up the kill. Oh, no, it wasn't. But at least he got the kill onto the Winter Wyvern and got the EXP for the one for the kill onto the PA. So pretty good so far, pretty good so far. And yeah, you can tell, you know, already a 3k net worth lead for the side of Exodia. Monkey King getting hooked under the tree. Oh no, this member and the cold snap, that's gonna be a dead Monkey King. So pushing it a little bit too far, trying to, you know, take this tower down at 59 HP. Unfortunately, wasn't quite able to clean that up and has to pay with his life for it. Vortex onto the Dawnbreaker. Dawnbreaker was able to get the Celestial Hammer off, but the swap there, bring it back into place. Get the kill onto the Dawnbreaker and clean up this tower. Let's see. Damn. This. Yeah, this feels bad. Smoking up. Oh no, if they find this PA. They're playing really well around their smoke. Also really nice dire ward right there, giving them vision. Dark Ascension does get popped. Now the Monkey King with the Wukong's Command, popping the Wukong's Command. Gonna go into the Pudge, but the Winter's Curse. Hitting onto the Night Stalker, doing a bunch of damage. Pudge will end up going down to sit forward. PA jumping onto the Storm Spirit. Swap onto the... PA, nicely done there, able to clean that up, really nicely done there by Pex, good swap coming through, and it was a nice Winter's Curse, but unfortunately wasn't quite able to, wasn't quite able to get the kill onto the Night Stalker, Night Stalker, just a little bit too chunky, and really nice fight here by the side of Exodia, all thanks to this ward, you know, being able to see the PA just farming here in the jungle, and they get some pretty key pickoffs here. They still have a tier 1 here in the mid to take, and yeah, Night Stalker starts applying some pressure onto that. And yeah, once they lose, once they take this mid tower, having access to this jungle area should be a lot easier now. They get the tower, Dawnbreaker, obviously. Trying to get some vision out after losing that, after losing that fight. Hook. Oh, actually hitting onto the Night Stalker. What did this member? Dawnbreaker is in the vicinity. There we go. There we go with the Starbreaker. Celestial Hammer still available, but not actually quite using it thanks to the crippling fear. Sip forward from the Storm Spirit, trying to save out his buddy, but fortunately not gonna be able to. Another hook. Ooh, nice dodge there by the Oracle. This member. Stone cool on for another 10 seconds. Magic Missile gonna hold that push down into place. All the meanwhile, this monkey king has been able to farm down here at bottom, you know, just chilling. They got a nice little D ward there. But unfortunately, they did not quite catch this ward, so. Oh, now they will. Nicely done. Now, now they gotta worry about this one. <laughs> it's another sneaky ward. Let's see. Just needs the Void Stone, and once he has that Void Stone, he will have his Battle Fury. But you know, once he has his Battle Fury, it's not it's not over by any means. That's the game's just getting started. Oh, this member onto the Vengeful Spirit, able to clean up that kill. So nice bit of gold going the way of the Dawnbreaker. Man, this PA furiously trying to farm her Battle Fury. It's just, man, this timing, not good. I mean, sure, you know, Battle Fury pre tournament minutes is like, sure, okay, but like, not what you want to be having when you're like 5k down. Let's see, working on that Ether Lens is gonna be nice. Monkey King leaping about. Nice little triple stack here. <clears throat> Gonna be able to clean that up. Let's see. Gonna be going for the Sage and Kaya. 
Agonim Rush, as per usual for Vengeful Spirits. Working on that BKB. Want to lock it, that's gonna be nice. Link Dagger. Damn, this Pudge. This Pudge is so sad. But then again, like, a lot of Radiant Heroes are very sad right now. You know, for your offlane patch, not to have a blink dagger yet. Um, definitely not, that feels good. Does have the Hood of Defiance, but still, you know. You want to see your, your offlaner with a little bit more farm and maybe more potential to have more impact. I want the wraparound here. The sit forward, they're going to find a patch. Crippling Fear, not able to do much. Looks like they're gonna find a kill. Looks like they will find a return kill onto the Vengeful Spirit there. Magic Missile does come through onto the Invoker a little bit of a pause. Dark Ascension gets popped. Invoker immediately popping the Ghost Walk with the three Quasis. I mean with the three Waxes, so he's gonna be able to run that much faster. Dawnbreaker trying to go for the TP on out, but... Storm Spirit was there with the Sip, canceling the TP. And that's gonna be a double kill for this bat. Nice. Nitro not chilling, <laughs> actually taking a bit of damage there from those ancients. Triple stacks don't mess about, but PA now nah, has the battle fury. You're gonna be able to farm a little bit faster now. Actually, going for the wraith band, just for the casual wraith band, why not? Get a little bit more damage out. And yeah, looks like she's gonna start working towards her desolator. Invoker has the BKB, so that's gonna be quite nice, especially you know. Whenever this bat or uh, storm spirit get on top of you, you'll always be able to pop that BKB and run away. Cold snap, tornado with a meatball onto the eventual spirit, doing a good bit of damage. Fortunately, oh sun strike, ha! <laughs> Nicely done there by the invoker. Even though the eventual spirit did turn around to throw that wave of terror, this invoker was able to hit that sun strike quite nicely. This mem this member onto the Oracle, but the immediate sip and the orb the vortex canceling the Wukong's command, Monkey King jumping in the middle, Pudge is gonna end up going down, and so is the Dawnbreaker. It pops the Winter's Curse, but unfortunately not quite able to catch on to anyone else, so it actually almost looked really good for a second there until the Monkey King showed up. <laughs> like with the Dawnbreaker Solar Guardian, it actually looked really good. I hit like Probably like three heroes, something like that. But then the Monkey King came in with the Primal Spring, was able to clean up those kills. If the Monkey King didn't show up, uh, that definitely could have looked a lot different. Almost there to that BKB, needs about 300 more gold. How's the Kaya working on that Sage now? Yeah, once this Monkey King starts having a little bit more farm, um, Exodia is going to need to be careful. Oh, nice hook there. That's gonna, definitely going to reveal the ward there with the Sun Strike. And the Dismember going to be able to clean up the kill into the Mitchell Spirit here. Well, that's just outside of Vision. Oh, but the Puppet Dark Ascension, they want to go for this Invoker. Invoker still having the BKB. All oh, gets hooked out by his boy. Nicely done there. Tornado, buying a little bit more time. It looks like he's going to be A-OK -okay, thanks to the BKB and the help of the Pudge there. But really nicely, nice ward here, like, they put a sentry down, you know, expecting it to be up here, but, you know, just in the nick of the range of that sentry. Yeah, I don't think this observer is gonna get the awarded. they're even pinging it, like, even eventually spinning it, like, bro, it's here, man. Trust me, man. Yes, it is, man. Gonna be able to deward that. Monkey. Jumping into the trees. Perhaps thinking of making a go into this Dawnbreaker long sip with the Vortex onto the Dawnbreaker. Dawnbreaker's done dead meat. Nice rotations for Exodia. Gonna be able to clean up that kill. Let's see how the PA is doing. Yeah, needs about 13 home more gold and she'll have the Desolator. Nice little stack there as well. Pause. Coming on through. It's been a lot of pauses and like 
like just pausing for the sake of pausing, but yeah. Oh, BKB for the bats and Blink for the Pudge. That's going to be quite nice for either team. Bad going to be able to run in, you know, just don't give a damn. Go into the back lines and this Pudge is going to be able to get some nice initiations with that Blink. Dire, even scanning, making sure there's no one hiding in the trees. Dire, they're sticking around. Raiding are showing up with some heroes. Blink, hook, not quite landing onto anything, unfortunately. Monkey King is counting things out with the primal, with the da uh, tree dance. Oh, they found the Dawnbreaker. Man, this Dawnbreaker is dead with the sip. Oh, tornado actually hit, hitting vortex on back. Meatball, oh, nice Winter's Curse. Unfortunately, hitting onto the Monkey King and just gonna be able to get that. False promise off, no problem. Hook, a little bit off the mark there. Would have been nice if this uh, win uh, Winter Wyvern would have been able to get that curse off on either one of the supports. But at least they for for uh, forced the false promise. So I'm surprised the Radiant are actually backing up after ju having just for uh, forced the false promise. Like. Big part of their team fight, and you know, like a big oh shit potential of like, oh, we're going on this guy, and then Oracle just false promises him. But now that it's gone, I'm surprised they're not actually choosing to fight. Oh, silence onto the push with the Wukong's command, hitting onto two heroes. Swap onto the Invoker. Invoker popping the BK, the EMP, still has the BK. Oh, BKB is on cooldown for another 18 seconds void. But the Invoker will be a okay already to the safety of his tower. Should I do know why they backed up? PA doesn't really have their her Deso, and they're trying to fight without the or the PA. PA can't really fight even with her Deso now. She can't really fight. She kind of needs her BKB, and then she can uh, kind of join fights. I mean, now she can kind of join fights, but doesn't really want to until she has her BKB. So it's a little bit unfortunate that the Radiant are trying to fight before this um, this PA is really ready to fight. Tornado EMP. Man, Dawnbreaker 5. This Dawnbreaker 5 has not impressed me too much. Either I see it or, you know, farming, like, I have never actually, like, I don't know, man. It's weird. It's weird. Dyer's courier has been killed. Dyer's courier has been killed. Like you kind of want to want to farm creeps. Sure, you want to get farm, but it's like you don't really want to take away the farm from your uh, from your other teammate, especially when you're like level eleven. So I don't know. It feels a little weird. And like maybe if you're gonna be getting like a blink dagger or you know some type of item that's gonna help the team team fight, then yeah, sure, okay, but. And I see an Ogre Axe, it's like, what am I thinking, Echo Saber? See, what's it gonna be? Echo Saber, like, like, yeah. <laughs> see, four staff, see for the Oracle. Almost there on the Aghanim Scepter. Needs about another 12 or more gold. I mean, honestly, like, Sorry, I can really do whatever the... The frick they want here. They can claim this tier 2, the last tier 2 if they want. They can take control of the enemy triangle if they want. They can go into Roche if they want. They do find some nice neutral items here. Blast Rig is a quite nice one. And yeah, Monkey can gonna be taking that. That the armor plus that miss chance. Once you do get hit, Dark Ascension getting popped. So it's a BKB and this Winter Wyvern is gonna end up getting picked off. Tornado. Let's head on to the supports, but now PA found out in the enemy jungle with no BKB, just gets vortexed up and put to the grave. BKB getting popped by the Monkey King, Deafening Blast gonna get dodged by that BKB. But Fudge, what did this man run to the Nice Stalker, but the swap saving him. Nice Stalker's like, why are you swapping me, bro? I wanna be in here. Get me back in. Guess that kill into the Pudge. Man, oh man. Ah, 
I don't know. I feel bad for this invoker because it's like I can tell he's not bad at the game, but I actually haven't been able to see like anything from him just because you know his team is like so useless, man. Like, <laughs> like so useless, man. You have PA Battle Fury with Desolator doesn't have BKB yet. Then you have Offlane Pudge, level 15 with like a Hood of Defiance and Blink. That's all his form. Bro, like, almost, like, has 1500 more gold than the position 5 Oracle on the enemy team. Like, yeah, it feels bad. I feel bad for sure. Gonna be able to claim up that Aegis. I don't know why PA is bothering with the outposts. She's just, you know, revealing herself and making it easier for Exodia GG to make a rotation. Lucky for him, Storm Spirit didn't quite have a lot of mana otherwise. I definitely think he would have sipped in there, no problem. I'm actually surprised they give the Aegis to the Monkey King. But I guess he is the person going in. But no, I think Storm Spirit is probably one of the best heroes to give the Aegis to, you know, just because he can deplete his mana uh, and his health. And then once he does get mana, he's like really back into the fight. And I'm not sure, I'm like, I'm honestly not sure this Monkey King is dying, like, I really don't see this Monkey King dying, you know, with this Oracle behind the Monkey King, and then with also with this BKB, like, I honestly don't see this Monkey King dying. And the person who's really going in is, like, the, the, the Storm Spirit, you know, the Storm Spirit is really the first person sipping in first, and, uh, really taking, like, uh, initiating things, and, like, you know, taking out all the aggro in the initial, in the initial beginnings of the fight. But this Monkey King will be able to play a little bit more aggressive now and, you know, feel safer. Nice little stack there. Let's see where your PA is. Enemy jungle. Yeah. Ian puts a ward. I'm not sure if he put that ward down or another support, but that's a really nice ward for the PA to be able to side the enemy, uh, to farm the enemy side of the jungle. Sip. Aggressive sips. Trying to find someone. You're going to find Dawnbreaker. Starbreaker there. Orchid. Vortex back. No dismember because you stood in a creep. Uh, and the, <laughs> the whole gang is here. You better start running. Nice talk with the PKB. And I get a kill onto the Pudge. And the other two supports are gonna go down respectively. <laughs> Apparently in Invoker, they're the one who really understand what, what what they need to do right now. And what they need to do is just stay in their <laughs> what they need to do is just stay in their base and not get picked off. Tornado, EMP, you're gonna weigh up, you're gonna burn away at the Monkey King's mana, so. This this Monkey King doesn't have any mana to work with. Let's see how the PA is doing on the BKB. Halfway there, so. Just needs to stall long enough until she gets BKB in Meteor. Try to stall things out. Oh, Sunstrike. Trying to find out the Oracle, not quite able to. Another tornado, celestial hammer. Not going to kind of clip onto anything, but ooh, monkey can actually dropping down to 50 HP. That's pretty close. Let's see, PA pretty much has her BKB. It's another what 20 gold. Yep. So pretty much has it. So we'll see if when they do go on back. Ooh, nice little tree dance there, dodging away the sun strike. So we'll see now that she has BKB if they do choose to take a fight. Probably gonna wait for the Aegis to expire. Don't really want to be fighting into Aegis. Let's see. AC. That's gonna be quite nice. Especially against this PA. Trying to mitigate some of that physical damage coming through. Pudge working on that BKB. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Vengeful has her ag, so she doesn't give a damn whether she lives or dies. PA okay, going for the rapier. I respect that choice. Definitely a rapier moment. Uh oh, Invoker getting stunned out. Woo! Able to pop the BKB before the vortex came on through. Oh, Winter's Curse, but the False Promise, the hook. Now onto the Storm Spirit, dealing a bunch of damage. PAD TP on, TP on back, and that's gonna be enough damage to bring down the kill. They actually deny the Night Stalker. Monkey King, 
Going out to this push, gonna be able to clean up the kill, Bandless Strike onto the Winter Wyvern. Winter Wyvern not able to get the Cold Embrace off in the nick of time. Buy back from the push. They're gonna go into the Vengeful Spirit. Vengeful Spirit gonna end up going down. There's her ghost haunting the enemies. Monkey again turning around, going onto this PA, PA, able to find some strike away on the backside of things. Push going onto this Oracle, gonna get the kill. Monkey King getting his Jingu stacks up. But now he needs to start running away. You do have the Aegis. Still need to be a little bit careful. Tornado, gonna be off the mark. Starting to click away. Does have the Aegis, but I'm not sure how long, how much longer he has on the Aegis meatball. And the Aegis expires! <laughs> Yeah, this Monkey King was able to clean up the kill onto the punch, but overall, I think you're quite happy if you're the side of the Radiant, <laughs> the TPs. I think you're quite happy if you're the side of the Radiant that uh, you do end up getting out of that. And dude, that was... <laughs> uh, that was funny. That was funny. That was pretty unfortunate for... That was pretty unfortunate for the... For the Monkey King there, like... Literally just what I'm saying, like, dude, how long does he have the Aegis for? It's like... Yeah, he expires and they get the kill onto him. He had plenty of opportunities to get out, don't get like I was watching. I was watching that tree dance. There were plenty of opportunities to just, you know, tree dance on out, but decided to stick around and ended up paying with his life. I mean honestly, you have a seven K net worth lead, so it's not that the end of the world, but you do wanna be careful with uh you know, little gifts like that that you may be giving there to the side of the radiant because Miss PA, she knows what's up. She ain't no pansy. She going for that rapier. She know what she needs to do. She needs to get as much damage as possible ASAP. See Lotus Orb. That's gonna be quite nice on the Winter Wyvern. Putting that on either the Invoker or the PA. You know, get that magic missile uh, reflected or this swap. I actually, I'm actually super curious how the swap works. Like, do you swap and then you just swap back into place? Like, so you end up in the original spot that you were? Not really sure how that works, but quite curious. I mean, PA, you know, like, she's far she's decently farming. She's farming decently fast. Like, you know, needs another 700 more gold and she'll have her relic. And after that, once you have uh, once you have the relic, then the demon age comes in quite easy. AC completed for the Night Stalker. That's gonna be quite nice, but you're definitely gonna need a lot more armor on these heroes. Especially this Monkey King. Monkey King, it looks like he's going for Satanic here. Interesting choice, actually. Like, um, on the Satanic, like, I, th I would think that, you know, the Jingu. The Jingle Life Steal with the Bandless would be enough, but maybe not. PA needs to be a little bit careful. What did she buy? Oh, she just bought a Basher. Okay. Hmm. I mean, sure, like, you know, Basher's a nice item, you know, it helps you stick onto, onto targets. I just hope you're able to get your Rapier. Uh, before, you know, Exodia G start applying a little bit too much pressure. Dianar are gonna scan into the enemy triangle. Monkey King is leading the charge here. With this Primal Spring. Oh, but they must have seen him. Oh, Monkey just goes in onto the Winter Wyvern. Winter Wyvern not able to get the Winter's, uh, Winter's Curse or the Cold Embrace off. Nice Stalker. Popping the Dark Ascension. Starting to right click at this Pudge. Pudge popping the BKB, but... This is gonna chase them down. That's like... Really, nothing they can do when uh, he has a BKB running, and don't really want to commit onto a bat with the rest of Exodia right behind them. So, it's like they might have to let these racks go. Monkey King hiding in the trees. PA going onto the back lines, trying to catch out this Oracle. Oh my god, they actually found out the Oracle now. Storm Spirit forced to slip on out. Zipping back up to the high ground. PA trying to find her target. Wants to find this Storm Spirit. Oh, but the the tornado, it's gonna be enough to lift him up and get the kill. And now PA, and then a little bit too deep. It's gonna end up going down. Make Monkey King making quick work of him. And now Invoker. In a little bit too low, a little bit too deep. Gonna end up going down. Down for an 80 seconds. 
Both the Invoker and the PA do have buyback. Nice, Winter's Curry is gonna be able to get the kill into the nice soccer there. Swap. Cold Embrace, bro. Cold Embrace, bro. Nice, able to get that Cold Embrace. PA trying to finish off the Ghost of the Eventual Spirit will be able to now. Monkey King in a little bit too deep. Triple buybacks coming on through. Monkey King popping the Satanic, trying to go for the Life Seal, but the Deafening Blast. Whew. Man, oh man. Man, oh man. PA forced to buy it back, so gonna set her a little bit back on her item progression. But yeah, I'm, so, I'm actually surprised, like, the lead is back up to 7k, and like, it, it dwindled down to 4k, and it's going back to 7k, they just lost a fight, like, uh, this net worth graph is going pretty crazy, but, you know, around here, it was pretty, pretty red sided but now the Dyer is starting to creep back on that probability. Yeah, the Dyer started to win some probability, but as it stands still, 72% win probability for the side of the Dyer. The Dyer are going to need to either make a whole lot of mistakes, or this Radiant team is going to need to play outside of their goddamn mind. See, almost there on the Lotus for the Winter Wyvern. That's going to be quite nice. And also that armor against the Monkey King or the um, Bat. You know, just not to be able to get ran down and just, you know, click that. Yeah, Pudge also going for the AC. Very much needed this game. Might want to turn your rod off, my friend. Nice. Alright, 400 more gold for the Sacred Relic here. I don't actually think they know that this is going on. They could honestly contest this. Well, it's a little bit hard. Dark Ascension is available. Even though it is daytime, you know, fighting into Dark Ascension is like so hard. Especially when you're behind. And you don't really have that vision advantage going on already from the wards. Gotta be able to make quick growth of Roche with the Wave of Terror and the physical damage they have from this Monkey King Night Stalker. Shard for the Storm Spirit. Give it the, again, they give the Aegis to the Monkey King. There we go, there's a relic for the PA. He needs 2,000 more gold. You should have that rapier. She'll need to be careful farming out this bottom wave. The rest of Exoria are kind of close by. And yeah, he's just gonna go to the enemy triangle and farm that out. Nice. Let's see, going for the abyssal next. Blads, that's gonna be quite nice. Get a little bit of life steal going on for the rest of your teammates. Oh, that's not very polite there, Monkey King. Not very polite. Let's have a look. We're gonna BKB. Go Scepter, that's really nice. That way you don't just get jumped by his PA. Oh, actually, it's fuck, man. Sorry, I, I actually don't know, like... Oops. I actually don't know why, like, sometimes this net worth thing goes away. I mean, I guess it is because I pulled up this, but then it went away and didn't come back. Uh, no, did not mean that. Did mean this. PA doing a good job farming out the enemy side of the map without getting caught, you know. Don't really want to get spotted, although he's going to have to be a little bit careful with this ward. He might get caught when he starts farming out this camp. Oh, but the TP starting to go on to this Winter Wyvern. Winter Wyvern does have buyback. It then down for 80 seconds. He's going to have to use the buyback. Who comes command, extra ring, up and available. Oh no, not like this, man. Gets a cold embrace. Woo! Able to get the hook out and bail him out of trouble. Nicely done there by the punch. So yeah, are going to be able to make quick work of these racks here. PA? Oh no! Oh no, it gets bashed immediately. Nice. Winter's Curse. 
unfortunately not doing a whole lot of work there. Swarm Spirit doesn't have a whole lot of mana, did zip in, dropping pretty low, gonna end up going down. Pudge was able to secure the kill onto this Oracle there, so no false promise. So this fight is looking promising fight. They get the hook onto the Monkey King. Oh my god, they get the kill onto the Nice Stalker here, the Dagger, chasing out the Monkey King. Doesn't quite have the tree dance in one more second. Does have it, but it gets cancelled by the Cold Strap. Gets surrounded by the enemy team. Double kill for this PA. Woo-wee! Man, oh man. <laughs> we got ourselves a game, boys. We got ourselves a game. Damn, and now this PA is going to have her rapier pretty much ready. Yep. There goes the Demon Edge. So this Radiant Squad going to be able to make quick work of the structures here. Monkey King gonna buy it back. So this is the Storm Spirit. All right, all right. They're not messing about. They don't want no more structural damage being done to their base than it already has been. This Monkey King and Storm Spirit do need to be careful though. If they get caught out, that's them both gone with no buyback. Maybe only one of them could have bought back, and then you, you could have saved the, the buyback from the other one. Um, you know, I get it. You know, you want to buy back, so they back away. But, you know, you could bait either Monkey King or the Storm Spirit, have one of them buy back, see if they're backing up, and if they're not backing up, you can even go for a fight, you know, stall long enough until some other heroes respawn. Like, for example, this Night Stalker. Once this Night Stalker respawns, the Storm Spirit can initiate. Monkey King buys back. And then, you know, you bait the enemy team, but unfortunately, they use a bug buyback, so they need to be a little bit careful here. I'm gonna have, there for a, I'm gonna have that for a minute there. Both teams sticking close together. Don't really want to venture out too far forward on their own, don't want to get picked off. Pretty much no one on the rating has buyback, so... Actually, no one has buyback as of uh, only the eventual spirit. Some people missing gold, some people on the CD. Oh, Sips. Oh, they get the Invoker. That's going to be a huge kill if they do get it. 120 seconds down in the silence, but this PA with Rapier just demolishes this Monkey King. Melts him. 120 seconds down in the sideline. Going onto the Oracle next. Now the Dagger gets dispelled by the Sip. Oh, nice hook there. Connecting through onto the eventual spirit. And man, oh man. Triple kill for this PA. This PA with the with uh, Rapier not messing about. Monkey King turned into paper mache with that uh, Rapier. Dude, I literally just saw the, I literally just saw the PA jump onto the Monkey King, get like one crit and dead. Oh, oh, they, they, they don't wanna finish this. They don't wanna mess about. They wanna finish this. Zimboker's gonna buy on back. Try to force something. Definitely the right idea. And, you know, PA has a buyback, but with the Rapier, I don't really think you care about your buyback. Vengeful gonna buy on back. I think Oracle's gonna be forced to buy back as well. How the tables turn. Now is the Radiant knocking on the Dyer's doors. Ooh, Tornado EMP gonna be a little bit off the mark there. Ooh, PA has the Abyssal Blade. They need to be careful. Storm? Oh, I actually missed these creeps. So, wasn't quite able to kill these creeps from actually pushing any forward. Well, it looks like Oracle doesn't actually need to buy on back. So, that's going to be quite nice. Going to be able to keep the buyback there for himself. I'm surprised the PA is the one actually, you know, staying back and not the invoker. Using the blur, but get cancelled as soon as you get close to a tower. Oh, here we go. Found the target onto the Night Stalker with the Abyssal Blade and a few more crates. They're going to be able to get the kill onto the Night Stalker. Down for 97 seconds. Does have buyback though. So, they do want it. I could buy on back. Monkey King, back alive another 13. I definitely think this is going to be the fight that decides it all. Since the Radiant, they don't want to go back to the way they were. They want to keep on pushing. Vortex onto two heroes. Invoker immediately popping the BKB. Still starting to right-click away at these rags, but looks like the Radiant are just going to back in a way. Too many creeps going into their base. Enemy heroes respawning. Not worth it. Might as well go back. Defend the base. 
you force a nice buyback onto the vengeful spirit and the bat, so gotta be happy about that. Screw this PA. Man, oh man. I actually want to see the net worth status. Yeah. 30k here for that PA. Like, I'm actually not sure what she buys here. Mm -hmm. Satanic wouldn't be bad at all. Satanic would not be bad at all. For sure. Or if you want to really bur uh, blow up these pesky supports, you could get a nullifier. Oh, well, Roshan will we'll respawn in two seconds, three seconds. So this is guaranteed. All right, cool. Roshan's back alive. So big objective here for the next few minutes. And whoo, the dire, they got a hold of that without, thanks to that wave of terror. Radiant though, are in the vicinity. One good thing here for the side of the, the dire is that it, it is nighttime. So you have that vision advantage. Invoker with the ghost walk. Monkey King scan things out. Push going for that axe. It'll be nice if you actually got the shard. Because that's a nice little pseudo save. They want to go into this PA. They start jumping the PA. PA disarmed. Still has the BKB. Popping the BKB. Oh, with the Winter's Curse. PA starting to switch targets. Actually not sure who he's going on. Oh, but Monkey King. With the Wukong's command, able to fight inside of it, get the kill into the PA, PA, just getting bursted down. Oh, I don't know why people are fighting inside the Wukong's command, not a good idea, the magic missile, gonna get the kill into the Invoker, Invoker would buy back for 120 seconds. This PA try to buy back, come back in, but Monkey King already picked this, rap picked this rapier up. Oh man, Cold Embrace onto the push, but, ah, this is gonna be GG. Yeah, You're GG boys. Oh, and they even find the Winter Wyvern, man! Nice catch there by uh, the Vengeful Spirit, but man, oh man, that's, uh, yeah, that's GG, that's really unfortunate, that was a, that was a really good attempt there by the side of the Radiant, uh, with the Rapier there from the PA, but, I don't know, just getting caught out here, um, and, I don't know, be, kind of being forced into a weird fight, like, Probably should have disengaged, like as soon as the Wukong's command came through, uh, fighting into Wukong's command. It's a little bit hard, I don't know how much bonus armor this Monkey King does get inside the Wukong's command, but it is substantial. 24 armor, that is substantial. <laughs> that is a substantial amount of armor that you get inside of the Wukong's command. And I don't know, they should have tried, just tried to back away, like, they didn't burst down the PA initially with the, with the initial burst. Uh, so it would have been nice if the Radiant actually backed away from that Wukong's command and then try to reset and then fight from there on. But they got a little bit carried away. They're like, oh, you know, we got the we got the Rapier. My PA can just go in. But unfortunately, PA doesn't quite have the same lifesteal as this Monkey King. You know, doesn't have the Satanic nor the Jingus. So it's a little bit harder. It would have been nice if this um, PA, before going into that fight, she had about 5k gold or something like that. Uh, four point something. Would have been nice if she had that satanic before that fight. If she actually had that satanic prior to that fight, that could have been a lot. That could have looked a lot different. I'm actually really surprised that the side of Exodia GG is not actually pushing. I mean, sure, your bench is dead, but you know, your bench is always dead. So, what? <laughs> There's not much, di not much difference there. And you know, you have the, you have the rapier, you have the oracle behind you with the false promise, and it's only like supports being back alive, but. Guess you want to play it safe, go into the Roshan, and then once you get the Aegis, then you can clean up, uh, you clean up the rest of the, uh, the base. I mean, yeah, it gets a little bit, I mean, it's definitely hard now for the side of the, the Radiant, although it still could be done. Uh, this Invoker is going to need to absolutely go, going to need to go bananas with this, um, with this Refresher or PA, can't really do as much. As she did before, now that she doesn't have the Aegis, but still, like, they're just chilling in their base. It doesn't look like they have much intention or will to defend, so we'll just have to see. And, yeah, Monkey King picking up the DD. Again, another remark that I always make, would have been a shame. It would have been nice if they actually bottled that DD, but, you know. Storm Spirit does have a bottle, so then you need to buy it. Hmm. It's funny, like... 
I don't know, this is weird, like, on one side you have one team, you know, completely smoking up, super try hard, and then you have, like, this Winter Wyvern in the base, I don't know, very odd. Uh, well, DD has come to an end, so no more DD. Let's see if they're able to find a pick onto the Pudge. Pudge blinking forward, actually find the hook onto the nice soccer, but blinked into the entire enemy team. It's gonna get brought down. Swap onto the Phantom Assassin underneath the Wukong's command. Gonna get brought down. Winter's Curse with the Winter's Curse with the Cataclysm. No, 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 anti combo. No. Man, oh man, it was a nice Winter's Curse, but unfortunately, you know, anti-combo with the Cataclysm, Invoke again swapped out. Oh man, my hit with the Magic Missile gonna end up going down, and then the long sip, and I get the kill onto this Dawnbreaker in the end. Man, oh man, and yeah, it's gonna be GG. What a game, what a game, that was actually, uh, that was actually pretty damn close. That was actually pretty damn close. It looked a little bit scary for the side of Exodia once this uh, PA did pick up the ba the Battle Fury, the, <laughs> the Rapier. But luckily, Exodia, with the superior moves, were able to find a nice little initiation onto the PA. Even though they didn't initially kill her with the burst, it kind of forced the Radiance into a bad situation. And once they lose that fight, you know, they lose the Rapier. It's pretty much GG, like... It's very, it's gonna be very hard for this PA to farm another rapier. It's gonna take a lot of time, and I'm not sure the his team could have stalled out for that long. But yeah, that was, whew, what a game! That was actually pretty crazy. Like uh, they actually all, they actually almost brought it back. Actually, almost brought it back uh, there for the side of the radiant. But uh, really nicely done there by Xero GG. Even though you know slipping away from the hands a little bit, able to. Secure that and put it in the bag and take a W for the team. Really nicely done and like I'm really like um, impressed by the by the supports uh, Oracle and both uh, Pex. Uh, you know like the amount of false promises that came in at some very clutch times and also the amount of swaps that like uh, led to so many kills. Uh, it was really cool to see. I'm always like uh, pretty impressed. Like I actually, I actually hate this hero. I actually hate Vengeful Spirit. But uh, the way like, you know, whenever I see Pex or somebody that actually knows how to use it, I'm like, damn. So this hero is actually useful. It's not actually garbage. And yes, it is. It's pretty nice. Like you don't have to worry about dying or anything because you're still in the fight. It's pretty cool, but yeah, that's gonna be it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to support the channel any way you can, whether it's liking the video, sharing it with your friends, wherever it is, your grandma, your girlfriend, unborn child, it doesn't really matter. A views of you. However, if you're not bothered, the mere fact you watch this video is good enough for me. Thank you so much, guys. Have a nice day and peace out.